chapter 9, Mishnah 8. The Mishnah continues the discussion of a sealed oven that developed a hole. In the first case of this Mishnah, the eye of the oven, which is a vent hole made to allow the smoke to escape, was sealed shut with clay in order to seal the oven. The clay plug in the vent hole then developed a small hole. At what size does the hole in the sealed vent hole unseal the oven so that it no longer shields what is inside of it from Tuma? The Mishnah teaches. If a sealed earthenware oven developed a hole in its plugged vent hole, the size of the hole that breaks the oven seal is one that is large enough for a spindle to go in and out of it while on fire. A more stringent opinion. However, Rabbi Yehuda says, even if it does not remain on fire, even if it does not remain on fire, according to Rabbi Yehuda, even a smaller hole unseals the oven as long as the spindle can go in and out of the hole. Even if the flame would go out in the tighter space, the hole is large enough to unseal the oven. The Mishnah now discusses a hole that developed not in the middle of the plug that seals the vent hole, but at the side between the plug and the vent hole itself. In this case, the Tanaim above take the opposite positions. If it, the plugged vent hole, developed a hole at its side, where the plug meets the vent hole, the size of the hole that breaks the oven seal is one that is large enough for a spindle to go in and out, even if it does not remain on fire. However, Rabbi Huda says the hole must be large enough for the spindle to go in and out and remain on fire. Another ton is more stringent than both the Tanakama and Rabbi Huda. Rabbi Shimon says if the plugged vent hole develops a hole in the middle, then a large then a hole large enough for the spindle to go into, even if the flame will go out, is enough to unseal the oven. That is, the hole's diameter must be slightly larger than that of the spindle. If the plugged vent hole develops a hole at the side, then even a smaller hole as large as the spindle, but that it cannot go into because it is exactly the same diameter, is enough to seal the oven, to unseal the oven. The Mishnah gives another case in which Rabbi Shimon holds a similar view. And similarly, Rabbi Shimon would say, in regard to a hole that developed in the clay stopper of a sealed earthenware barrel, whether the stopper develops a hole in the middle or at the side where it meets the mouth of the barrel, the size of the hole that breaks the barrel seal is one that is as large as the second ring of a rye stalk. However, the two measures are slightly different. If the stopper develops a hole in the middle, then a hole large enough for the second ring of the stalk to go into is needed to unseal the barrel. If the stopper develops a hole at the side, however, then even a smaller hole, the same diameter as the stalk, but that it cannot go into because it is exactly the same diameter, is enough to unseal the barrel. The Mishnah gives a third case in which Rabbi Shimon holds a similar view. And similarly, Rabbi Shimon would say, in regard to a hole that develops in the clay stoppers of large earthenware casks that were sealed, whether the stoppers developed holes in the middle or at the side where they meet the mouths of the large casks. The size of the hole that breaks the cask seal is one that is as large as the second ring of a reed. However, the two measures are slightly different. If the cask's stopper develops a hole in the middle, then a hole large enough for the second ring of the reed to go into is needed to unseal the cask. If the cask's stopper develops a hole at the side, then even a smaller hole the same diameter as the reed, but that it cannot go into because it is exactly the same diameter, is enough to unseal the cask. The Mishnah gives measures for a hole in the stoppers of sealed barrels, the second ring of a rye stalk, or large casks, the second reed, ring of a reed. The Mishnah now qualifies that ruling and says that these measures apply only to certain barrels and casks. When are these things said that there is a minimum size the hole in the stopper must be in order to unseal the barrel or the cask? When they were made for wine, i.e. when the barrel or cask is holding wine. But if they were made for other liquids, such as oil, honey, or milk, then there is no minimum size. Even the smallest hole in the stopper unseals the barrels and casks, and they become tame from the corpse in the tent. The Mishnah further qualifies its ruling and says that even in the case of wine, the minimum size given by the Mishnah do not the minimum sizes given by the Mishnah do not always apply, do not always apply. What are these things said that there's a minimum size the hole in the stopper must be in order to unseal the barrel or cask of wine? When the holes were not made purposely by a person. But if they were made purposely by a person, there is no minimum size. Even the smallest hole in the stopper unseals the barrels and casks of wine, and they become tame from the corpse in the tent. Until now, the Mishnah has been discussing a hole in the clay that seals the opening of the earthenware vessel. Now the Mishnah discusses a hole in the vessel itself. 
if they, the barrel or cask, develop them, themselves develop the hole, then the size of the hole that makes the barrel or cask and its contents open to the corpse tuma in the tent depend on what the barrel or cask was made for. If the barrel or cask was made for, for holding food, the size of their hole is measured by their ability to hold olives. If they develop the hole large enough for an olive to fall through, tuma enters that hole. If the barrel or cask was made for holding liquids, the size of their hole is measured by their ability to hold liquids. If they develop a hole large enough for liquids to seep in, tuma enters that hole. If the barrel or cask was made for holding both foods and liquids, we apply it to the stricter size, so that if the barrel or cask had a cover sealed all around, tuma would enter a hole that would allow liquids to seep in.